A very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I was just actually showing how a uh, computer unsavvy I am. Uh, so this is the hospital where we work and uh, this is the surgical oncology team. Uh, we practice subspeciality in uh, Zydus Hospital. So I handle the GI and thoracic oncology part. Uh, a bit of an introduction has already been given and uh, just taking it forward, it's actually the way it is. It's actually the servant to the surgeon. And uh, in the present era, the most advanced form of artificial intelligence known to man is the Da Vinci XI. XI is the latest version of the Da Vinci Robo. That is what we have in Zydus Hospital. Uh, it should be considered as a practical extension of laparoscopy. And uh, the way it's got incorporated was for the fact that uh, America is at war with a lot of countries and they found that uh, in the war zone it becomes very difficult for surgeons to go and operate. So what was the concept in the 1990s was can we actually do telerobotic surgeries. That is the reason why this concept was developed by uh, the defense uh, and then finally they found that you know it's not a very viable option so then it went into the private sector where the company intuitive took it over and uh, they have a patent for the machine which at present is the only one in uh, the world which is the da vinci the patent expires this year and hopefully next year onwards we'll start seeing a lot more machines coming so the brief history of uh, the way uh, robotics came into use and uh, the only way these companies survive is, is if there's another company manufacturing something, either you join it or you take over it. So that's the way it happened. There were a couple of companies uh, who were interested in the robotic mechanism. And finally, they all merged together and now you have only one company. Uh, majority of the advantages have already been uh, uh, illustrated by uh, Dr. Puvias. The another advantage is the learning curve is a bit short. Now what happens is uh, once you have uh, become a surgeon and if you have not picked up the art of laparoscopy, it becomes very difficult when you are already in practice to learn the art of laparoscopy. The best place to learn is when you are doing your residencies. So for a lot of surgeons who have missed the chance for doing laparoscopy, a robot becomes the only option to actually learn minimal access surgeries. Yeah, the only, cost, only the problem is the cost, but it is still an option which is viable. Even some of the disadvantages have been mentioned, I'm just skipping them. I'll just uh, come to a little bit of evidence. So what happens is, uh, is there actually evidence to show that uh, the surgeries which you do robotically, are they better than laparoscopy or open? So what we have in the stomach, uh, there was evidence to show that compared to open surgeries, the laparoscopic surgeries were a bit inferior. But we have found that the lymph node yield and the overall results of robotics is as good as open. So robotics become, becomes an option for uh, gastric malignancies. Similarly, in esophagus, we have found that the number of recurrent laryngeal nerve injuries are less. So that's the reason why it is still a viable option in, lung, uh, in esophagus. But if you see in the lung, uh, the evidence is against it. So European society has condemned the use of robotics in lung surgery. So that's the reason why we still consider thoracoscopy as the main way of doing lung surgeries. Uh, in pancreatectomy also, there has been an advantage, especially for the distal pancreatectomies. Uh, colorectal, yes. When we are doing um, sphincter preserving surgeries, it is really helpful. Uh, for the rest of the colon, it's, there's no much evidence to show that it's better than uh, laparoscopy. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just show you a few surgeries. I'll just rush through some of the surgeries which we commonly do. So this is uh, uh, esophagectomy done for...
So there's an esophagectomy done for a cancer of the esophagus. Uh, the reason I'm going to show you this case is there was a lymph node which was stuck to the thoracic duct. Uh, these are the direct branches of the iota going into the esophagus. Uh, to cut the cost, and not only to cut the cost, the instruments uh, provided by the robotic system are so robust, so we are using only monopolar and bipolar. Uh, I uh, rarely use the harmonic. The reason is the cost of the harmonic, the probe, is actually double the cost of the rest of the instruments, plus it doesn't have the uh, angulations which are seen in the rest of the instruments. So you can see that this is the lymph node and uh, the thoracic duct is stuck to the lymph nodes. As a trained cancer surgeon, we are always going to remove all the possible uh, cancerous tissue which is prescribed in the particular surgery to get the results. So you can see that this thing is the thoracic duct which is engulfed by the lymph node and this maneuver actually becomes a lot more easier when I'm doing a robotic surgery compared to a laparoscopic surgery. So some of the areas where I find uh, robotic surgery is a lot more helpful in the esophagus is when you are dealing with the thoracic duct, when you are dealing with lymph nodes above the azygous. And uh, uh, these are the two main reasons why uh, robotic surgeries become a lot more safer for the patients and we tend to get better results. So these are in real time. This is the way we are able to, we can finish off a robotic esophagectomy, the thoracic part in uh, around 1 hour 15 minutes. So I finished around 25 uh, robotic esophagectomies. We have not had a blood, tra blood transfusion given for any one of them. We have not had a single conversion. Uh, so these are the results which we expect with the robotic esophagectomies. The average stay in the hospital before discharge is 5 days. Uh, these are the lymph nodes in the subcranial region. You can see that this is the right bronchus, this is the left bronchus. So we are able to remove the lymph nodes in total. We don't break the capsule. There's not going to be too much of a bleeding because of the magnification. The magnification is practically 10 times. When I move my hand five times, the movement inside is just once. So even jerky movements are very nicely translated within the robot. You can see that I was just uh, fidgeting with this direct branch from the iota, but so easily I can just hold it and uh, I can uh, just buzz it off. So this is again clearing the lymph nodes. Uh, 